My name is Latisse Reynolds, and I am here as a time traveler, and I actually think it must be uh, 1910. Is it 1910? Have we gotten to 1910 yet? By now? Okay. And I'm 81 years old, so you will forgive me if I am a little tottery, but uh, I think I should be able to get up here and look at some of the things on this table. My, my, so much time has gone by since I started um, for this country here in Walla Walla and so in fact let me just find some notes that I made maybe I could get you to help me and you could hand these out and on one side you're going to see some events in the life of Latisse Reynolds and on the other side there will be a um, list of things that happened during my lifetime. So maybe that you can follow along and get some uh, interesting things that happened to me as well as to our country as we were, uh, we were starting out. In 1830 is when I was born and I was born back in Arkansas. I was the oldest of 12 children and uh, back then we had large families and um, of course we all worked and uh, when I was 12 years old my family uh, Lucinda and Elijah Milliken many of us uh, as families we wanted to go west to start looking for property and places to raise our family, get away from uh, the turbulence of the East with uh, brew, brewing wars and uh, lack of, um, of places to, to have religious freedom and so forth. And so my family started planning on going west and so my father because there were 12 of us children uh, and uh, there were quite it would be quite crowded in one wagon he built two wagons and as you can see back there you'll see an example of the kind of wagon that we went west and at that point we didn't have um, a large number of people going west and so this was not something that was a big idea so much as we just needed to um, gather together and uh, go as a large group because we didn't know, there were a lot of fears, we didn't know what to expect. So he came up with two wagons and the size of the wagon was significant because uh, It'd be 10 feet long by four feet wide and everything that we owned or wanted to keep, we needed to put in that wagon. And so it wasn't something that we had room for extras. And so we sold uh, everything we could except for what we needed for food. And we made quilts, each, each family member had a, their own quilt, and we did a lot of hand tying of quilts in the winter time, and we were getting all ready to go west. Well, about that time, uh, uh, Marcus Whitman was back there to get permission to keep his, his um, mission going. And he was there and coming back west to his family. And uh, so he joined our group. So here we are, the first really large group of a thousand immigrants coming west. 
And this was in 1843. So this was the very first large group that we had. And we started out, and it was exciting for us. We were, uh, we were gonna be on the road for four to six months. Turns out it was a, closer to six months. And we were cooking on the, um, on the trail. And we were having to do all of our cooking and uh, subsisting on the trail with the kinds of foods that we could make on uh, this wagon train. And as we traveled along, we ran out of uh, places we could get our wood. And so as you can see, we used uh, buffalo chips. So uh, we, w and they make good fires because they burn really hot. And so, at any rate, um, this was the kind of adventure that we had, and I was 13. So, uh, it was a good experience for me, and I was really quite helpful because I was 13 and fully grown, you know. I mean, that's for a girl in the pioneer days, uh, I was uh, quite, quite mature. And so, we were able to, um, to make good time and we were, our, our leader was the Applegate brothers, our leaders, and uh, we had Marcus Whitman along for guidance and um, he was also a doctor and he was able to help us a lot because he had been over that road. So, okay, we, uh, that was in um, 1843 Somebody else had, was also traveling at the same year, but not with our group. And his name was Ransom Clark. And um, Ransom was older than I am, but uh, he was with the um, Fremont group. And the Fremont group was to, um, to map out the, the trail so that it, he could write uh, and promote it for more people to come west because we really needed to have people come and f from the United States area to, uh, to claim the land and um, that way then the United States would get to, to keep the west and it wouldn't go to England. And so, uh, anyway, he was traveling uh, with, with uh, Lieutenant Fremont, and when he got out here to Walla Walla, uh, then he um, spent a little bit of time looking around, was quite impressed with Walla Walla area, but then went on with uh, Fremont, and then he um, was able to uh, be done with his uh, his tour uh, with with Fremont, and so he ended up the same place that we did, and we ended up over there in Yamhill County, and that's where we settled. Well, this was now a couple of years has gone by, and I am now 15 years old, and I've um, now old enough to get married because. A uh, young lady that is 15 is married, marriageable age. And so um, we decided to get married. Now, I don't have a very big picture of Ransom Clark, but I do have a little picture here. You can pass that around so you can see who Ransom Clark is. And uh, so we got married, and he was uh, quite a bit older than me. We, uh, we settled near, it, right there in the Yam Hill area, and we grew produce, and we sold it. So we were doing quite well as, as um, farmers, and we were uh, successful at, um, at the, this, this endeavor. And um, then soon, in 1846, we had a son, Charles, and we also had a second son. Uh, they were born as twins, and one died at birth. So uh, 
Charles was the only one that, that uh, was able to grow to adulthood. And uh, other than losing our, uh, the twin, things were going well for us. And then again, in 1848, we had another son, uh, Harry. He was born um, in 1848, and uh, then Ransom decided to go to the mines, and because so many people were uh, mining for gold or uh, different metals and so forth, and uh, so he went to the mines in the. Um, in the California area, and then he, um, while he was gone, then um, we had another son, which, um, no, actually, Harry was born in 1848, but then he died in 1852 while Ransom was at the, at the mines. So that was something that uh, was very unfortunate. The little guy was only about four years old and uh, we lost him. Uh, children didn't have uh, the easiest time when it came to things, um, whether it was an accident or cholera or whatever, it was, it was hard for, for them to make it. Uh, but Ransom, he still thought that he could mine some more, and so then he ended up in Colville. And he was not the best miner because he just wasn't very successful at it. So he decided he'd better come back and spend some time uh, helping me with what I was working on. And that was we were in the motel or hotel business. And so we were really trying to uh, make a go of that. And so uh, when he left Colville and he came back to uh, where we were in the Portland area, then uh, he stopped by Walla Walla and he looked around. And he really had his eye on uh, an area an, over in the Yellowhawk um, uh, River area. And that's just, just, just a little ways from town here. And so he, um, he went ahead and mapped out some, some of acreage there. And I don't know if you've heard of the donation claim, or, or if you're married, you can uh, claim 640 acres. And if you're single, then you, can, then you get half of that. But because um, we were married, uh, he was able to map out 640 acres. Well, there were some Indian problems, and so they came and they found him uh, in this area and said, you have to leave. And so he went ahead and had to leave, but he did file on this, uh, this land. And so we were able to, um, to file on it, but not actually start doing anything with it at this, that point. And so he helped me there in the uh, Portland area on the motel, hotel business. And um, then, um, then in 1858, uh, they said, well, the Indian trouble is, is taken care of. And so uh, you can now go back to the area and uh, stake your claims. And so he gathered together some things uh, and headed over to, fort to the Walla Walla area. And the fort had been, um, um, had been, been formed about a year before that. And so we, do, we did have soldiers here, but he was, um, there wasn't much of a town. And so in 1859, let me just show you, there wasn't much of a town here, but on the cover of this book is, uh, you can see there's, there is just a few little buildings there, and yet um, it's the start of something. It's the start of a, of a little town, and uh, 
course, he's about uh, the Yellow Hawk area is about two miles away. So we were considered he would we would be considered out in the country. So anyway, he came back to uh, he got things started where we he hired somebody to um, start uh, preparing the land to build a cabin, and then he came back to. Um, to the Portland area where I was, and he started gathering tools. And if you get a chance, I won't pass these around because they're sharp, but this is the kinds of tools that he would need to build a cabin. And uh, he would uh, also then collect things for planting. And for, uh, for planting, there were nine cases uh, he put together of the apple and peach seedlings so that he could uh, he could start an orchard here and um, he get got all this together and then um, in 1859 he started out to come over and uh, and prepare this area for uh, for building a cabin and started building the cabin, and then, um, then his, his plan was to come back and get me in, uh, in Portland. Well, we had some problems with the hotel. We had a partner that was not real honest, and so he was, uh, he was keeping the profit, and I was uh, really feeling the need to have a man face that, uh, situation and so I did ask uh, for some help and uh, ransom uh, he had taken our son Charles over to help build on this cabin in 1859 and so he uh, he left Charles with the care of someone the two of them were working on the cabin and then uh, uh, Ransom came back to get me and uh, to get our our youngest children. I at that point was pregnant uh, again with um, our next child, and um, so he came over to uh, to get me and to settle things with his partner in with the hotel. And um, when he uh, when he got there, he became ill, and um, things weren't going too well, and he just wasn't getting better, and he died. And so here now we have a situation where um, I've lost my husband. My son, oldest son, doesn't know that, uh, that uh, Ransom has died. And I'm pregnant, and uh, and it's not uh, not a good situation. Besides just missing my husband, and so, but um, there was a judge, and he said his name is Judge Shattuck, and he said, just um, you know, we had I hadn't seen the claim, and he said, just don't don't uh, don't go over just uh, I'll, I've had someone here that will give you $250 for it and you can just forget about it and you can go home and, to your mother and father and let, they can help you with everything and I just thought you know Ransom really believed in Walla Walla and what he had and I really should at least go and look at what he's what he's talking about because I hadn't seen it but I needed to go and find out so I um, traveled from Portland clear over to Walla Walla which was quite different than it is today I understand you've got freeways <laughs> and I don't even know what a freeway is but we didn't have those and so uh, I traveled by boat and by uh, whatever means I could, and I had my little, my little uh, this one, and I uh, I traveled over to see what it was like in Walla Walla. Oh boy, I could see what he was talking about. It, Yellow Hawk, 
creek on one side and another. I mean, it had all these waterways and all these. He had planted trees and, and it, he had done so much. And the, the cabin was almost done. Have you heard? Have you seen the cabin? She's seen the cabin. Well, hopefully, before you leave today, you will go down and see the cabin because it's down there in the village, and it's beautiful. It is very nicely built. And so anyway, I, I got to see this, and I'm saying, I can understand why Ransom really liked this place. And I think, even though a, no woman has done this before, I'm going to prove up this claim. I'm not going to let it go. I, this was his dream, and he was my husband, and I loved him, and I'm going, to, I'm going to prove it up. So, but in the meantime, I'm about to have a baby, and I have things back in Portland I need to take care of. So back to Portland I went and uh, settled up things with the hotel, and uh, settled up everything that needed to be taken care of. And I had my little baby, uh, and that was a little girl. And that was Lizzie, or Elizabeth. And that uh, then, still in 1859, uh, I packed everything up. And this was another thing, is we didn't have any transportation over here in Walla Walla. And so um, Mr. Abbott was, he was going to bring a, um, a conquered stage over to Walla Walla and he was going to start a business where he transported passengers to and from Walla Walla to uh, Lewiston and Wallula and so forth. And so this is, you can see the Concord stage here. This is what my young children and I traveled in to uh, over from Portland to Walla Walla. And then once he got, he got us here and, and got the stage coach, then he was able to start his business. And so when I got here, the cabin was done. And so it was all finished, and I'm ho really hoping that you'll go down and see it because it is beautiful. Ransom had designed it, and he had done a beautiful job doing so. However, things were tough for me because I'm a single mother now. I've got children to take care of. I've got seedlings that are growing and need to be watered. I've got uh, all the laundry that I needed to take care of for my family as well as for others. If I, whoops. And uh, I, I churned the uh, butter. We had, everything was just more difficult because it wasn't I understand today you've got machines that actually wash your clothes and you got what a refrigerator or something like that that keeps things cold. You've got so many conveniences I didn't have. And so I worked very hard trying to make ends meet and but there were times and there was a lot of things I could do. But there was, it was really hard to make any money. And uh, so, anyway, I needed to find a way to, to earn some, some money. So, uh, because there are some things that just have to take money. And so, I'll show you, and you can pass that around. That, but that was one of the things that I needed, is some way to, make, to earn a living. And so I found that I could sew flower sacks for, for money. And so uh, I was able to work in a flour mill. And it just so happened that this flour mill 
was in the next property, next, the next uh, claim, because Almos Reynolds had been hired to come into town and, and build a flour mill for all the wheat that was being grown. And uh, so he was, um, but he was needing someone to sow these flour sacks for the grain. And so that was how I made what little money I needed to uh, supplement all the work that I was doing. So anyway, this, uh, this went on for a while and, uh, and I was able to, uh, to manage. And, um, but then as we worked together, Almas Reynolds and I, uh, we started to a friendship that was a little bit more than uh, just business partners. And, and with time, we decided to get married. And again, it's, it's, this was a, someone that was an older person than myself, because I'm 29 years old when I became a widow. And two years later, Almas Reynolds and I got married. And we, um, we got married right there in the Ransom Clark cabin. Now, if you go down there and look at it, you're gonna see it's not very big, but it was really uh, big enough for us. And it turned out to be a double wedding because my sister also married at the same time. And so, but the person that married us was Cushing Eels. And Cushing Eels is a name you'll know because uh, he also, he donated the land for Whitman College and he also was a very well-known uh, name in this area in, if you do some research on, on him. So uh, Almas was a very respectable businessman. He built uh, more flour mills as well as started the first bank in the area. And uh, and here, let me just show you, there's, uh, in 1865, Walla Walla was growing. As you can see, it has got quite a few more, more businesses and stores. And the interesting thing, too, is grain. Now, you know how I told you Ransom went to the mines and so forth. But uh, it turns out that grain was the new gold for this area because, oh, if you go through our museum, you're going to see how grain uh, and growing and harvesting grain was such an important part to our, our area here. And so this was a very, very important crop. And now I have, oh, we had some more, ch more children. Okay, in fact, in fact, I had seven children in all, and five of them grew up to adulthood. And so, um, but I had uh, two, two children. In fact, I think some of you may know who they are here. Um, let's find my notes. Let's see here. Alan was born in 1869, and um, Harry was born in 1863. So I don't know. There's got to be a connection here somewhere. Uh, somewhere. Anyway, <laughs> if, if, stay tuned and come back, and you'll you'll probably find that there is some more connections. And I'd like to show you some pictures. That is me. And here you're going to see some, some pictures of the family that maybe some of you will recognize as, as other members of your family. Anyway, um, so like I was saying, uh, 
Almost Reynolds uh, teamed up with uh, Dr. Day and there was a building that they owned and they also started the first bank. And it's interesting because even though it was the first bank, it wasn't the oldest because Baker Boyer came, uh, the, the two men, they, uh, they started theirs. But um, the one that um, Almos and Dr. Day started uh, was, uh, was uh, taken over uh, by Levi Ankeny, and that's another name that you'll probably get to, to learn more about. But anyway, I had some interesting um, things, even though, well, okay, um, Almos, he, he died at 81, and um, it was in 1889 that he passed away, and we lived, I don't know, you've got a new post office uh, on 2nd Street, and that's where our home was, our last home together. But um, it was it it was something like twenty years that uh, I have been a, a widow since he since he passed away. So, but uh, I have had an eventful life because uh, even though um, I'm alone, uh, my son Harry he has been very much involved with. Um, building projects, uh, I would like to someday have a home built on our old home place, but uh, Harry has built his home there, and so maybe I can build mine next door to his. And, uh, but he, they've had some projects with, uh, are you familiar with the YMCA? You know, you know about the YMCA? Uh, we have some young men, quite a few young men in the area that need something to do that is constructive. And so um, it's been my, uh, my children's and my desire to have uh, a facility that would keep them busy and out of trouble. And so um, it's been proposed that we build a YMCA. Uh, and so, but they needed money for it. And so in order to do that, they, they needed a donor. And so my son convinced me that I should get involved. And so I gave $20,000 for that building. And that's quite a bit of money back in the day. And uh, so at, um, that, that, yeah, that was a lot of money, but you know, I could spare it and uh, we've been quite successful, and so that is what we, uh, where I put the money, and I'm not sorry at all because it's been very successful uh, for our young people, and um, then our young ladies need some uh, some care too, and so uh, the the uh, the college there at Whitman College uh, needed to have a girls dorm and they uh, went ahead and started building a girls dormitory and what happened is they had they, they were short of money and so they need we needed to put that debt to uh, an end and so I came up with six thousand dollars for that one so uh, but this is what the dorm, dormitory looks like because the dormitory is gone. It, they've torn it down. And I don't know why, because it was a beautiful building. But I, they probably put another building in its place. Anyway, so, but anyway, I have uh, interesting things to, that I could share. I don't know how we're doing on time. As you can see, if this runs out, we're, in, we're out of time. So, but um, anyway, um, I, uh, I feel like we have a very nice little town here. In fact, there was a time back in 1863 when Walla Walla was the largest in, largest area, or large, 
uh, in the biggest town in the whole uh, territory of Washington. So uh, we might just continue to be bigger than any place. Do you think maybe that's going to happen? I don't know. So um, we had something happen, uh, you know, some an invention back in 18, the 1880s. Um, we had a, a closing of the um, open range by way of people putting up something that was invented called barbed wire. And so I'm going to pass that around because I just find this very interesting. Some of the different styles. Uh, open range was the way that the, cat, the, the cattle were run and uh, it was just normal to do a cattle drive. But then when these things started, these different forms of barbed wire came in, um, it just changed that. So you couldn't just drive uh, your cattle to market. And, uh, but it, this was what we considered progress. So it was a good thing but then it was an annoying thing too. <laughs> so anyway, uh, okay, well, there's some other things I can talk to you about, but what I'd like to do is share something with you that, I mean, I was considered a good cook and I was well known for my cooking. Um, I even understand that my cheese won blue ribbons at the at the uh, the fair, and so. But um, I do have a favorite recipe that uh, I make, and so I'm going to ask if you can read an article that was in the newspaper about my cooking. This is about Aunt Lettuce's Lettuce Reynolds Gingerbread. The recipe was handed down by Mrs. Lettuce Reynolds, who, as the wife of Ransom Clark, came to a donation land claim on Yellow Hawk Creek in 1855. After his death in 1859, she married Almas H. Reynolds in 1861. First president of the Wall Walla chapter, Daughters of Pioneers of Washington, in 1938, was the Lady Mary E. Clark, granddaughter of Lettuce Reynolds. Active membership roles of the chapter now contain the names of Charlotte, Terry, Margaret, and Ruth Reynolds. So this is a, this is a recipe that I've shared with you year after year. And I made another, another cake, so I'm going to see if Donna, if you can help me here. And I would like to have you try out my recipe. And so, so thank you for coming. And if you have any questions, I hope, hopefully you will help yourself to the cake. And this, again, this is my very own recipe. We very much appreciate your living history contributions. We like to have these flowers oh. to represent how much we appreciate oh, you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. <laughs> oh, they're beautiful. <laughs> thank you.